Hello everyone, I'm Megan Sullivan and welcome to my final impressions video for Tactics Ogre Reborn. After nearly 100 hours, I think I've played enough of the game to talk about it competently, so let's go ahead and discuss what I enjoyed and what I did not enjoy about this new take on the classic strategy RPG. Again, thank you to Square Enix for the review code. By the way, if you enjoy my coverage of history and RPGs and other wonderfully geeky stuff, please remember to like and subscribe and I'll keep bringing it to you right here on my YouTube channel, Meg Sullivan. So in my first video on Tactics Ogre Reborn, which you can watch here, I had lots of positive things to say about the gameplay, although I also had some concerns. Now I'm happy to report that things I enjoyed are still enjoyable. Yay! Alas, the things I feared would become a problem for me later on down the line actually became a problem, and I want to talk about that. But first, I want to start with the fun, positive stuff, because there's a lot of it, so let's do that. Now in my previous video, one of the first things I praised sky high was the story, and I will continue to praise it because it's excellent. Tactics Ogre Reborn is a rich and complex tale about how conflict between various nations and political factions affect the lives of everyday people. The twin themes of loss and betrayal are very much at the heart of the hero Denim's journey, as he struggles to maintain his humanity and keep his circle of family and friends intact while fighting in a ruthless war that threatens to destroy them all. As I said before, Matsuno Yasumi's writing is a masterclass in making us feel the very real-world impact of the dire decisions people are forced to make in times of war. And I love how Matsuno includes a backstory for many of the side characters who join your party, which not only makes for some interesting dialogue between enemies and allies, who as it turns out have a history together, but also presents gamers with the opportunity to use that history to potentially turn an enemy into a powerful ally that will join your ranks going forward forward. This is a great way to thread the story and gameplay mechanics together, and 30 years on, it's still impressive. Also impressive is the revamped soundtrack, which is more epic than ever with a rich full sound full of wind instruments, trumpets, and beautiful strings. Now I admit, I found the visual upgrades a little less impressive. The pixelated art looks a little too smoothed over, but overall, I still appreciate the game's shiny new veneer. Colors really pop and dynamic terrain stands out better. I also want to call attention to the character portraits. These portraits remain some of the best I've ever seen in a game, so big shout out to the game's artist Yoshida Akihiko for an amazing job. Along with a visual upgrade and a remaster of the epic soundtrack, developer Square Enix also added a handful of quality of life improvements, and I'm happy to report that most of them are a huge net positive for Tactics Ogre Reborn. I know I talked about them in my previous video, but let's quickly review what those improvements are. Right off the bat, one of my favorite new additions is the Scout feature. By using this ability, you can assess enemy battalions ahead of time and study their location, level, class, equipment, etc, etc, while checking out the terrain to look for any useful choke points or tiles that may prove to be an obstacle. Another happy addition is the new Trajectory Prediction System. This feature allows you to see whether or not your projectiles will hit their intended targets before launching them. The developer also added new combat skills like pincer attacks, yes, as well as the ability to resuscitate fallen comrades, yay! Plus, the more flexible class system not only does away with technical points, which had to be managed separately from magic points, but now you're free to mix and match equipment and skills however you want. Well, almost. There are still some class restrictions. But wait, there's more! The new Chariot Tarot feature lets you undo dumb mistakes on the battlefield, I really appreciate that one, and crafting items and armor now has a 100% success rate, huzzah! Oh, also the frustrating nightmare that was random battles has been yanked out of the game, and in its place you can now train your units by revisiting past battlefields whenever and wherever you choose. Now I'm a little mixed about the addition of random buff and debuff cards on the battlefield because sometimes powerful bosses will quickly get a hold of them, making them practically invincible, but for the most part, I like this addition because it adds a spicy bit of unpredictability to combat. And since the enemy AI has improved, you need every advantage you can get. Luckily, ally units are a little smarter too, so if I needed to mindlessly level grind between story events, I could set each unit's AI to one of four basic presets and go about my merry business. Although I still had to check in on the action, because like I said, the enemy is smart and will pick off vulnerable archers and mages if you're not careful. And you know what? That's a good thing. That's fair. But you know what doesn't feel quite as fair? The new unit level cap. 
And this is where I feel Tactics Ogre Reborn really stumbles for me. Now, don't get me wrong, I like the idea of trying to balance combat by making sure that you and the enemy are on an even playing field. This is a strategy RPG. It's not really tactical if you can just steamroll your opponents. I understand. And a balance level cap makes it clear that if I'm level 20 and the enemy is level 20 and I'm getting my head handed to me on a silver platter, the problem is me. With lots of creative options to approach combat, thanks to some cleverly laid out battle maps and lots of debuffing items to lob at enemies, there's always a path to victory, it just needs to be found. But in Tactics Ogre Reborn, that doesn't always feel like the case. And that's because the new level cap, which is for your entire party, is set kind of low. It was not uncommon for me to go up against enemies that not only outnumbered me and had the high ground, thus a huge tactical advantage, but they could be anywhere between two and five levels above me. And there was nothing I could do to close that gap. Now in the first two chapters, this was manageable and didn't feel too bad. It was kind of rewarding to conquer enemies that started out in a superior position. And having lots of debuff items like Dinah's Mead certainly helps. I'm not saying it doesn't. But as the game wore on, battles became an endless and exhausting gauntlet. I'm looking at you, Chapter 3. And even battle maps where I didn't completely struggle or actually did pretty well felt like an unbearable slog. Yes, even with the combat speed cranked all the way up because it took forever to chip away at an enemy's health. Plus, you still can't exit certain dungeons once you're in them, so if you need to start over because you don't have enough items or the right equipment, you just lost a huge chunk of time for nothing. And I think that's what really bothers me about Tactics Ogre Reborn. It just doesn't feel like it respects your time. Everything just takes forever. Yes, I know battle maps always took a long time to get through, but they never felt this long. Luckily, that's my only real issue with Tactics Ogre Reborn. Every other complaint I have is fairly mild. Like, I wish the Warren report had better descriptions for items. I wish the developer hadn't completely nuked archers. And I wish healing spells were as effective as healing items, which a lot of the time they're not. But good news, I said that there was no auto equip in my last video, and it turns out there is. And you can craft multiple items at once, even when they're equipped. So that's another wonderful quality of life improvement. Like I said, most of these improvements are pretty darn great. So, even though I do not think this is a perfect remake of Tactics Ogre, I do think it is still the best version available. Square Enix did a great job bringing a 30-year-old game up to date, which is not an easy feat. The story and characters and music and battles are really, really good. It's true, I don't like the new unit level cap, but I also know I'm in the minority there, and even with that said, I still recommend picking up this game. Just pack your patience. You're going to need it. What do you think of Tactics Ogre Reborn? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching, guys. See you later.